Let's jump over to a man, Teddy Cakestat. We talk to Teddy, folks, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Put it on your calendar. You can reach Teddy every trading day at forex-trading-unlock.com. Teddy Cakestat, good morning. Good morning, Tommy. Boy, so I was jumping around to some of the Forex markets. We can jump into that, but I know everybody loves your take recently on the crude market. Uh, volatility persisting, man. The market down about five bucks. I'll put it on a short-term 15-minute chart. Uh, yeah, five dollars and change. We we're at 115 yesterday, Teddy. We're back to 110. Uh, what's your take right now on this crude market? Oh, I think we're going to keep on pressuring resistance. And I think it's pretty obvious that the bulls are in control right now. And I see us getting back above that 116 level and going back up to 120, I think, pretty solidly within the next week or so. I just think the trend is really, really supported right now. Tough to tough to argue against that one, to put it lightly, man. Um, for for listeners out there, Teddy, that are you know thinking about trading crude, I don't really trade crude at all. I don't trade much futures in general myself. Mm -hmm. But uh, for those looking to trade this market, you know, it's it's. I mean, I, I I wanted to talk about this because even as a bull, right, you got a mm -hmm. a drop from yesterday of five dollars in a heartbeat. Um, you know, off nothing really dramatic. You, you know, I, I put this thing back to last week, and thanks so much for filling in, doing the program last Wednesday. Uh, you had crude last Wednesday, early overnight, start at $98. You must have had a heck of a program, man, because crude made it up to 106 during the day, mm -hmm. um, makes it to 115. But how would you think about trading this if you do trade it when you have five, six, seven, fifteen dollars $15 swings, even within a larger trend? Well, that's a good. That's a really good question because with this kind of volatility, I mean, the margins on crude are very, very high. You know, and there, here's something also: when you look at the crude market, unlike most futures contracts, it has monthly expirations. So that rollover to begin with is constantly going on. So that already has a big deal to do with pricing. So if you're going to trade the crude market and any type of trend, you have to really be aware of that to begin with. OK, nice. so um, which month you trade, you know, whether you're trading the actual at the front month or one of the back months, you know, that's going to be something you have to take into consideration. Um, and also your risk levels, you know, um, what's your risk reward? You know, right now, you know, you have easily five, six dollar swings in the oil market. So if you're having five, six dollar swings just in a gy normal gyration, what are you looking to capture? You know, I mean, you got to look to try and sure. catch a $25 move. So you have yeah. to have a big capital outlay for trading it, you know. So I think that's nice. the one thing you have to be careful with. And options are probably the way to go. Nice. It's a great point, man. You know, and a lot of, not a lot of people would probably think about it in that capacity. And you should, folks, because it's all about risk reward. And, yeah, you better realize that even if you're a strong bull, man, yeah, there's going to be five dollar moves in a heartbeat. You know, no real news mm -hmm. from yesterday to today that would really drive that market down. I mean, I'm sure there's news, but you know, you're barely off of the highs. We we're at 98 bucks, as I said a week ago. You bought that, you're up 10 right. bucks. But guess what? You had to take a six dollar swing um, mm -hmm. to the downside uh, during that. Let's jump you into up a good point too, real quick, sure. Tommy. Is that when yes. you talk about the futures, this goes with Treasury bond futures too and 10 year futures. You know, one of the ways that I I still trade those futures, but I trade them mostly even oil. I use the currency markets through it. I use the yen as nice. my as my way of trading oil and the bonds. So you've you've walked me through that before, Teddy, but we got a bunch of new listeners and I love the way that you walk through, you know, the yen um, oil intensive producing economies. Can you walk the listeners when you say that real quickly, how they would do something like that in terms of what currencies um, move and, and why they kind of make those moves? Because I think that's great education you walked us through before. Sure. OK, so for instance, like how what we're going to talk about here is how to use oil and interest rates. The U.S. dollar yen, we know that interest rates are a function of currency pricing to begin with. So the bullishness of the uh, of the of the interest rates in America are definitely bearish for the U.S. dollar or are bullish for the U.S. dollar yen cross. Then you couple it with oil with a very strong bullish trend that we have right now. Japan's a completely oil dependent country. They don't produce oil, you know. So with this type of trend going on, that also gives it bullishness to the U.S. dollar yen. So that's how I say how I use nice. those fundamentals for those markets where, you know, am I currently in an oil position? Not exactly, but I am because of how I'm using that trend to trade another market. I remember the first time you went over that example, man. It was a great example for people to understand, you know, what really drives some of the currencies, man, and what drives it is real life, mm -hmm. you know, talking about commodities, purchasing power, whether, and we all know interest rates, of course, as well. 
Um, mm -hmm. So the yen, I got the yen up here on a daily. We make it to 131 and change a couple weeks ago almost. You had a little bit of a pullback. Uh, what day is that? Was that the day you were on the air? Uh, day after you were on the air. Mm -hmm. Kind of chopping around between 128 and 130. What's your take with uh, the dollar yen coming up? Well, that's an interesting trade, especially right now as we're talking. It's pretty much off or it's laying on the lows of the day. And uh, irony, irony is the other markets are kind of flat. Oil is only, you know, slightly up or whatever right now. Interest yes. rates are flat. Um, the yen right now now I think is just in a chop zone. This is just a consolidation period. Remember that the the U.S. or excuse me, the uh, Japanese uh, uh, central bank and their finance ministry were going to try and to defend their currency originally a month and a half ago. That's what they were talking about. They have yet to do a thing, and we've been bobbling between 128 now and 130 now for what is it? A week and a half, two weeks, you know. So it's interesting. I think that as long as, you know, the, the bluff has been called on Japan. So I, I believe that as long as the, the interest rates are under pressure and as long as the oil starts to um, continue to press resistance that the U.S. dollar yen is going to definitely probe higher highs. Yeah, maybe a little bit of consolidation there after accelerating from remarkably mm -hmm. in March, man, 115 to 130 and change. Uh, what other trap setting up right now. Yeah, no, I could see it, man. You know, I mean, there's no there's no real weakness. I see a consolidation, if anything, man, at, at the highs and things can't go up forever. A consolidation sometimes if you're bull is a nice thing to get a little break before that second charge higher. Uh, what other currencies with movement, Teddy? I was looking at them. You know, we just had a little bit of chop, maybe a little bit of pullback from the trends that you've been talking about recently. What, mm -hmm. uh, what other currencies are you looking at on your radar this week? Uh, well, definitely the euro is something I'm looking to sell rallies in. I don't see it finding any truce um, bounce, actually. Now, interesting yeah. enough, we've had a little reprieve in dollar strength with those currencies over the past few sessions. And I would be very careful right now. I think that you're kind of finding a point where you can start to sell into the euro U.S. dollar as well as the pound U.S. dollar. Um, now, the U.S. dollar Swiss, we hit parity already. That was pretty interesting. Remember, we were yeah. talking about that weeks ago. Yep. I thought we wouldn't hit parity until at least June, something like that. And like a balloon underwater, we've done it. So it'll be interesting to see how weak. You know, and I have to say, like, I think that we're seeing with the Swiss franc is that this whole Ukrainian Russian thing, when they opened up the doors to the bank, the, as far as what's going on with Russian customers and stuff like that, that changes the whole value of the Swiss franc. Swiss, Switzerland is no longer a neutral country, you know, yeah. and I think I think that we're going to start to we could see this the U.S. dollar Swiss get up to like 120 or something like that. Ooh. If the world really starts to view Switzerland as no longer anything more than just a little European hideaway. OK, and what, we got 30 seconds, man. Is is are we going to get parity in the euro U.S. dollar? When is that coming? Oh, absolutely. Man? We're, That's coming. Yeah, that has to. Just, if we have parity in the Swiss and we have the U.S. dollar yen going like this and even the pound is, is bashing lows. How, how can the euro not collapse? You know, just amazing it's going moves, down below man. parity. Amazing moves. I got them up on the charts and just uh, mammoth moves, as we know. Teddy, we appreciate the conversation, the education as always, man. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday, man. Sounds good, Tommy. Have a great day. See you guys you next week. You have a great week. one as well. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back to finish up the show.